Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Friday. Today is the 5th of June 2020 and we are celebrating the feast of Boniface, also known as Winfrith, his Anglo-Saxon name, uh, of Crediton. He was a bishop, he was apostle of Germany, and he was martyred in the year 754. And this is what Exciting Holiness has to say about Boniface. Born at Crediton in Devon in about the year 675, Winfrith took the name of Boniface when he entered the monastery in Exeter as a young man. He became a Latin scholar and poet and was ordained when he was 30 years old. He rejected a safe ecclesiastical career in England and in the year 716 became a missionary to Frisia following in the steps of Willibrord. He was eventually commissioned by the Pope to work in Hesse and Bavaria, where he went after consecration as bishop in the year 722. He courageously felled a sacred oak at Geismar, and since the pagan gods did not come to the rescue, widespread conversion followed. He was the founder of a string of monasteries across southern Germany and made sure that they were places of learning so that evangelization could continue. He was made Archbishop of Mainz in the year 732, where he consecrated many missionary bishops. He worked assiduously for the reform of the Church in France and managed to ensure that the more stable rule of St. Benedict was adhered to in her monasteries. He crowned Pepin as the Frankish king in 751, but was already very old. While waiting for some new Christians to arrive for confirmation, he was murdered by a band of pagans on this day in the year 754. He has been judged as having had a deeper influence on European history than any other Englishman. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness where your forebears tested me and put me to the proof though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 142 Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. I cry aloud to the Lord. To the Lord I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him of my trouble. When my spirit faints within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, they have laid a snare for me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to and no one cares for my soul. I cry out to you, O Lord, and say, you are my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am brought very low. Save me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. 
bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, then shall the righteous gather round me. Bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. God of compassion, you regard the forsaken and give hope to the crushed in spirit. Hear those who cry to you in distress and bring your ransom to people to sing your glorious praise now and forever. Psalm 144. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Blessed be the Lord my rock, who teaches my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my steadfast helper, my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues the people under me. O oh Lord, what are mortals that you should consider them? Mere human beings that you should take thought for them. They are like a breath of wind. Their days pass away like a shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast down your lightnings and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and let thunder roar. Reach down your right hand from on high. Deliver me and take me out of the great waters from the hand of foreign enemies whose mouth speaks wickedness, and their right hand is the hand of falsehood. O oh God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-stringed harp, you that give salvation to kings, and have delivered David your servant. Save me from the peril of the sword, and deliver me from the hand of foreign enemies, whose mouth speaks wickedness and whose right hand is the hand of falsehood, so that our sons and their youth may be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters like pillars carved for the corners of the temple. Our barns shall be filled with all manner of store, our flocks bearing thousands and ten thousands in our field, our cattle be heavy with young. May there be no miscarriage or untimely birth, no cry of distress in our streets, Happy are the people whose blessings this is. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. Happy are the people who have love for the Lord their God. God our deliverer, stir our weak wills, revive our weary spirits, and give us the courage to strive for the freedom of all your children, to the praise of your glorious name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, reading from verse 2 to the end. At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites a second time. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gibeath Har Haraloth. This is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the males of the people who came out of Egypt all the warriors had died during the journey through the wilderness after they had come out of Egypt. Although all the peoples who came out had been circumcised, yet all the people born on the journey through the wilderness after they had come out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the Israelites travelled for forty days, forty years in the wilderness until all the nation, the warriors who came out of Egypt, perished, not having listened to the voice of the Lord. To them the Lord swore that he would not let them see the land that he had sworn their ancestors to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So it was their children whom he raised up in their place that Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. When the circumcising of all the nation was done, they remained in their places in the camp until they were healed. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, so that that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were encamped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the evening of the fourteenth day of the months in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day that they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Once, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing before him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went to him and said to him, 
Are you one of us or one of our adversaries? He replied, Neither. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What do you command your servant, my Lord? The commander of the army of the Lord said to Joshua, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. The Canticle Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O oh, Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, not sacrifice and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 10, reading from verse 1 to verse 16. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of, in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anybody is there who shares your pe in peace, your re peace shall rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and the people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we will wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But at the judgment it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. This is the end of the second reading. The Responsory Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, and be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me. The Gospel Canticle, a Song of Praise. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of all our praise for ever. You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and nation and language. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, 
be blessing and honour in glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. We offer up now our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. And so firstly, we pray for the day and its tasks, and let us spend a moment in silence just recalling these to mind, praying that God will be with us in both the ordinary and the extraordinary things of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the world and its needs. We commend in particular those nations that are suffering especially badly from the effects of this virus. And we lift you the state of Yemen, racked by civil war and now rocked by coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church and her life. We pray in particular for our own community of Berkswell, asking you to help us reflect prayerfully and intelligently on the shape of the church once we emerge to the other side of this crisis. What are the opportunities and what are the challenges? Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for those seeking reconciliation and those who work for it. We pray for our cathedral and its ministry of international reconciliation. But we also pray, Lord, for reconciliation closer to home. In particular, we think of the, the racial divides which are extreme in the United States, but nevertheless exist here by degrees, asking you to help us recognize our common humanity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Continue to pray for Pam Gre Stan Green and for Pam. And we pray, Lord, for those who are recently bereaved. We especially commend Eunice to you and ask you, Lord, to comfort her in the grief, to comfort her following the death of David. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
God our Redeemer, who called your servant Boniface to preach the gospel among the German people and to build up your church in holiness. Grant that we may preserve in our hearts that faith which he taught with his words and sealed with his blood, and profess it to live lives dedicated to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.